Welcome to my YouTube channel. Learn at ease. In this video I will discuss a topic in biochemistry. Biomolecules, carbohydrates. Part 6 Heteropolysaccharides. In my previous video I explained few examples of homopolysaccharides, whereas, in this video I will be focusing to explain heteropolysaccharides, which are the polysaccharides made up of more than one type of monosaccharide repeating unit. The examples of heteropolysaccharides that I will explain in this video are glycosaminoglycans and its subtypes, glycoconjugates and its subtypes, and I will briefly introduce you with lectins. I will start by explaining few examples of heteropolysaccharides with their structures. The first family of heteropolysaccharide that I will portray is of glycosaminoglycans, which is also known as mucopolysaccharides. As constituents of proteoglycans, the glycosaminoglycans is a group of acidic heteropolysaccharides that are important structural elements of the extracellular matrix. Proteoglycans provide the ground or packing substance of connective tissues. Their property of holding large quantities of water and occupying space, thus cushioning or lubricating other structures, is due to the large number of OH groups and negative charges on the molecules, which, by repulsion, keep the carbohydrate chains apart. Examples of glycosaminoglycans are hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, keratin sulfate, and heparin. I will now explain structures of each of these glycosaminoglycans. I will start by explaining hyaluronic acid, its structure is represented in the image at the bottom left. Hyaluronic acid contains alternating residues of deglucuronic acid and N acetyl glucosamine, it is linear and unbranched polysaccharides. It possesses to 50,000 repeats of the basic disaccharide unit, hyaluronates have molecular weights greater than 1 million. Hyaluronate is also an essential component of the extracellular matrix of cartilage and tendons, to which it contributes tensile strength and elasticity. They form clear, highly viscous solutions that serve as lubricants in the synovial fluid of joints and give the vitreous humor of the vertebrate I its jelly-like consistency. Hyaluronidase, an enzyme secreted by some pathogenic bacteria, can hydrolyze the glycosidic linkages of hyaluronate. Other glycosaminoglycans differ from hyaluronate in two respects. 1. They are generally much shorter polymers and 2. They are covalently linked to specific proteins, known as proteoglycans. Now I will explain chondroitin sulfate, its name is arrived from Greek word, chondros, which means cartilage. Chondroitin sulfate contributes to the tensile strength of cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and the walls of the aorta. The image represents the structure of chondroitin sulfate, which is composed of two different monosaccharides that are, glucuronic acid and, N acetyl galactosamine with sulfate on its fourth carbon. Now, let me represent keratin sulfate, where its name is derived from Greek word, keras, that means, horn. Carrot and sulfate have no uronic acid and their sulfate content is variable. They are present in cornea, cartilage, bone, and a variety of horny structures formed of dead cells, horn, hair, hoofs, nails, and claws. Image on the right shows the structure of carrot and sulfate, which is composed of two different monosaccharides that are, galactose and, N acetyl glucosamine with sulfate on its sixth carbon. The last type of glycosaminoglycans that I will portray is, heparin, which has derived its name from Greek word, hepar, which means liver. Heparin is a natural anticoagulant made in mast cells and released into the blood, where it inhibits blood coagulation by binding to the protein antithrombin. The image on the bottom right represents the structure of heparin, which is composed of two different monosaccharides where the first monosaccharide is either of glucuronic acid or egeronic acid, with sulfate at their second position. The second monosaccharide is glucosamine sulfate with, two additional sulfates, on its third and sixth position. Now, I will represent a table from the reference book, Lenninger's Principles of Biochemistry. 
The table represents the composition of some important homo and hetero polysaccharides along with their significance. Now I will portray second family of heteropolysaccharide, that is, glycoconjugates. Where the first subtype is, proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are macromolecules of the cell surface or extracellular matrix in which one or more glycosaminoglycan chains are joined covalently to a membrane protein or a secreted protein. The glycosaminoglycan moiety commonly forms the greater fraction by mass of the proteoglycan molecule, dominates the structure, and is often the main site of biological activity. In many cases the biological activity is the provision of multiple binding sites, rich in opportunities for hydrogen bonding and electrostatic interactions with other proteins of the cell surface or the extracellular matrix. Proteoglycans are major components of connective tissue such as cartilage, in which there are many noncovalent interactions with other proteoglycans, proteins, and glycosaminoglycans provide strength and resilience. The image represents the structure of proteoglycans. The image shows proteoglycan structure, showing the trisaccharide bridge. A typical trisaccharide linker shown in blue color, it connects a glycosaminoglycan, in this case chondroitin sulfate is shown in orange color to a serine residue, serine residue is shown in red color in the core protein. The xylose residue at the reducing end of the linker is joined by its anomeric carbon to the hydroxyl of the serine residue. Now I will explain another image of proteoglycan. Micrograph of a proteoglycan aggregate from bovine articular cartilage is shown in the image. Bovine articular cartilage functions to provide tensile strength of this connective tissue. Core proteins bind a single, extended molecule of hyaluronate the resulting proteoglycan aggregate. See the image where haluronate, keratin sulfate, and chondroitin sulfate in represented with lines and boxes. Carefully see the image to understand the organization of haluronate, keratin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, and core proteins in bovine articular cartilage. Bovine articular cartilage retains water of hydration and occupy a volume about equal to that of a bacterial cell. Now I will explain second subtype of glycoconjugates, that is glycoproteins which is also known as mucoproteins. Glycoproteins may carry just one or a few, often highly branched, oligosaccharide chains. Glycoproteins contain covalently linked oligosaccharides that are smaller but more structurally complex, and therefore more information rich, than glycosaminoglycans. Glycoproteins have one or several oligosaccharides of varying complexity joined covalently to a protein. They are found on the outer face of the plasma membrane, in the extracellular matrix, and in the blood. Inside cells they are found in specific organelles such as Golgi complexes, secretory granules, and lysosomes. Third and the last subtype of glycoconjugates is, glycolipids. Glycolipids are membrane lipids in which the hydrophilic head groups are oligosaccharides, which, as in glycoproteins, act as specific sites for recognition by carbohydrate binding proteins. Lastly, for this video I will give some highlights on special family carbohydrate binding proteins known as, lectins. The chief function of lectins in animals is to facilitate cell-cell contact. A lectin usually contains two or more binding sites for carbohydrate units, some lectins form oligomeric structures with multiple binding sites. The binding sites of lectins on the surface of one cell interact with arrays of carbohydrates displayed on the surface of another cell. Lectins and carbohydrates are linked by a number of relatively weak interactions that ensure specificity yet permit unlinking as needed. Escherichia coli bacteria are able to adhere to epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal tract because lectins on the E. coli surface recognize oligosaccharide units on the surfaces of target cells. These lectins are located on slender hair-like appendages called fimbriae, pili. References used to prepare this video are given here. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe below. Thank you for watching my video. This video is prepared by Dr.